but but Chop Shop and and uh, the, uh, and and Man Push Car, those were distributed by uh, who? who distributed? Man Push Car was a company that had a business called Films Philos. It was a very tiny, yeah, one man operation. Did you have basically. a theatrical in New York City? Yeah, like a week. It thing? was in um, mm-hmm. the Angelica. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. So he did. They did good. Yeah, okay. it did I mean, okay it for a while. For, I mean, to me, it was amazing. It got released. I couldn't believe it. He even had a release. Yeah. And then Richard Lorber picked up the DVD rights for that, and then Richard picked up Chop Shop. Oh, Kino Lorber? Or is he, he was at the at time that doing that time, some, was it Kino Lorber? I think it, it might have been some variation. Yeah. Well, some, anyway, it's always yeah. Richard he was, was there, something. There was yeah. a variation, yeah. Yeah, he, he's, came gone and he, different... he's gone through a couple things now. Yes. We were, I was just talking to him with, uh, with Elise from Kickstarter because the guy who was overseeing all the film stuff here until recently, he moved over to Kino Lorber took over uh doing the publicity for their hmm. for them well i like richard and yeah. he's a real he is a good he's, he's a really good he's got really good, good instincts taste and yeah and he's a real cinephile and a real supporter of yeah kind of art house films absolutely he's good yeah he yeah he um he, uh, he's he, one of those you know uh names that everybody yeah. you know every every's come everybody's kind of had something something to do with richard larber at some point or yeah. other if you've been in it long enough and then also uh, Chop Shop had a, obviously was did had a, obviously a nice theatrical, but it, yeah, Chop Shop was at um, Film Forum. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have a sense that that the people that I mean, you here you were making films about immigrants already, and did you have a sense that immigrants were discovering your films at all? Did you ever have any kind of way of? Feeling like you were connecting to the any immigrant culture through making these films, or were there special? Yeah, I mean, screens? sometimes. Yeah, I, you said Chom Shop. I remember there were often mm-hmm. Hispanic or Hispanic Americans okay. at the screenings. Um, same with Solo. I remember there would be Black Africans. I would see them at the screenings. Yeah. They would come up to me and talk to me. Um, how many? I, I don't know. No, no, I know. Because I'm, you know, where where we think about the educational or institutional distribution, which is not typical of a, you know, a theatrical a typical theatrical distribution company. You know, Kino Lorber, which we just brought up, and says why way of an example, actually has a distribution, a sub sort of sub distribution component to them, where they do that mostly with obviously documentaries. Hmm. Not necessarily fiction films or narrative films, but you think about it, and it's like a perfect type of thing to do with a film like those, you know, because you do want to kind of reach those folks that, you know, these films are about your stories, and you were you were doing that. I think as, they should teach film more in high school and middle school. Well, they are now. I mean, I think so. Maybe not not in any kind of significant way, though. Yeah. But then there are now. My son's high school. He's going to high school this fall, actually, and there's a you know. There's also it's film school of the arts yeah, oh, in in Brooklyn actually. Oh wow! So, and there's like a Brooklyn. I know in the Bronx. There's a, a, a film high school. So I mean, it's that's not huge <laughs> cases of that, but there it's 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 emerging, I guess. But you're right, you know. So and then, then at any price, right? Is that was that the name of the uh, yeah the next one? That's where I thought I was going to meet you. Oh, because I was working with the Tribeca Film Festival that year, and they would exploit the heck out of all their, their screening committee people by asking them to do, you know, Q&As, which is nice. The first day or two, you're enjoying them, and, you, you know, and then by, you know, well, a week into the festival, you're like, oh, I have to be here at, like, 10.30 in the evening. Are you kidding me? You know, but uh, there was one I was supposed to do with you for at any price, oh. and unfortunately, you were not there, oh. so I didn't know that Sorry. until I, No, thank you, finally. I feel I have closure on that. <laughs> <laughs> Who did so? I was so looking. For, I, don't know. I was looking so much, <laughs> looking forward because obviously by then I was. I had seen your prior film, all your prior films, so I was really looking forward to it. But uh, you, you probably had another enga- uh, application. Yeah. That's my guess. Not to do the Tribeca Film Sorry. Festival, but it, it was not your. It was not also. It wasn't your uh, premiere. It was like the second screening, probably. Yeah, went, yeah, I'm we sure you were at the premiere. We were in um, Venice. And well, I mean, Venice Tell You Ride in Toronto were the premieres for that. Yeah. One. I, I meant your first screening at Tribeca. Oh, okay. you, you might have been at. Even I was at that one. I yeah, I'm sure that. you were. This was yeah, probably yeah. the second one. Okay. They didn't have me doing premieres. They they said that for the, the bigger dogs there at the Tribeca. But speaking of Toronto, it's come up also. You have also a very close relationship with the Toronto Film Festival, yes. yeah. right? They've screened pretty much uh, most yeah, of since your films. Cameron, mm-hmm. uh, since Cameron took over, they screened all of them. So mm-hmm. starting with Chop Shop, mm-hmm. and him and Jane have been big 
supporters of mine. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's a great festival. Yeah, no, it's one of the yeah top festivals, yeah. right? Uh, and you even brought um, Fahrenheit 451 there, right? You asked if they could screen that, right? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Because I saw something online. I was yeah. like looking at Q&As and stuff. I can't, like we were emailing Cameron and Jay and I were emailing about, I think just meeting up in Cannes. And I said, well, why don't you just show the film? I, I've been showing everything there. Yeah. And then they said, well, why don't we just show, we have a screening series. We could show it at that screening series. Oh, right. And I made the film there. So right. They, had a scre- they have a screening series for films that are about to come out. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of naturally fit into that. Yeah, sure. Um, and that you, like you say, you probably worked with a lot of people from uh, We had a Ontario. lot of cast and crew from Ontario. Toronto. Yeah. yeah. I remember you talking about it. I must have watched one of your, or listened to a cue. One thing I like to do for, you know, in uh, preparation is now I can download a Q&A that yeah. you've done that might be longer and yeah. more nuanced. And I can listen to it. I and did learn do a heck Q&A. Of a lot. There. I did yeah, it. You did. I thought we did. I did. I think I did a podcast with the yeah. Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 You probably did. Yeah. So I was finding out a lot about that. And then when you did at uh, Columbia uh, after Ninety Nine Homes, which I'm jumping the gun a little bit with with that economist uh, Joe Stieglitz. Stieglitz. That's right. Yeah. That was great. That economist who won a Nobel Prize. That 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 guy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that number cruncher yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, who sat in with international like you know right like heads of state and yeah he was on, on the clinton team and um, sure yeah world bank and yeah you know writes a lot about wealth inequality and yeah, globalization it. and, and its discontents that's one of his big books it's a really good book yeah and he's and he likes movies it seems yeah <laughs> which is nice but he um it brings me to this this point where we were talking about david and his kind of this little uh, pivoting that he did in his filmmaking, you know, like going for David Gordon Green, like away from these smaller stories to larger stories. But in your case, I feel like you made a conscious choice to go from these very, correct me if you feel differently, which I'm sure you would, but going from these, as you put them, the realist approach, which is more like what we, some people might call a so documentary approach. It's just letting like the, characters you're watching them observing them in their daily lives in this portion of time and something's unfolding and we're watching it and we're learning about struggles potentially also you know uh triumphs but small triumphs and then uh, now with with at any price though this became an overtly kind of had a political theme to it uh right something very much in the in the uh, zeitgeist uh, with Monsanto and with farming, agri, big agra, as they call it. And uh, and then after that, you have 99 Homes, which is, of course, about the uh, housing, uh, housing, crisis. housing crisis and, right, and the uh, um, mortgage crisis. Um, so it was, I, can I assume that I'm right, that you decided to make things that were more overtly political in theme? Well... Yeah, I mean, I guess both those films were um, reaching at something larger socially. Yeah. Um, and trying to whittle them down to some simple story. Um, but that hopefully they could be projected out into something um, larger in terms of our where we are as a, as a society. And more people are going to see them. Well, more people maybe would see them because I, you know, I shifted to putting actors in them, and um, a little bit more story maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it was a conscious choice to try to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so you you cast Dennis Quaid, or well, you didn't, but you worked with the casting agents agent or agency and Zach Efron right yeah. right so yeah so obviously you're going to be reaching a much larger yeah audience i think yeah. it's important right isn't it important at some point to try to do that and um, and, and i think and, everyone should do what they want to do and then they can they don't you don't have to but mm-hmm. um also those roles like Shannon and Garfield's roles in 99 homes i'm not sure a non-actor could do what i had written right I would have to have written it differently, I think, for a non-actor to get in there. And You're right. That. Yeah, I didn't think of that. That's right. Um, a little bit too complex. Um, the, the nature of the scenes were a little too complicated for 
a non-actor to manage that. Um, it could have been an unknown actor that's different, someone who's trained to be an actor or has just their or dream. Or from theater. Or... And it's their first time ever doing it. That's different. But totally untrained people, it would be a little too much, I think, the way mm -hmm. they were written to manage it. Now, I did put non-actors in smaller roles in 99 Homes because I thought they could handle those roles, and they did. Right. That was fascinating. Yeah, that was great. I, I loved how you that. did that. And I plan on to continue to do that, um, mixing the two Yeah, I, loved, I can. Yeah, and it, it seemed to really work for 99 Homes because here was this team. Again, it's about the mortgage crisis about, the, you know, uh, about 10 years ago, <laughs> and, and um, still, still, still a crisis, actually, for many. But um, part of the thing was you had this team, right, where Michael Shannon and uh, uh, Garfield, Garfield, Andrew Garfield, right? They're they're uh, they're going together, like from, right uh, or separately, as the case may be, to kick people out of their houses. Yeah, and uh, it's like a perfect way of of setting this up, where you don't know when you open the door. You didn't tell these guys, right? They didn't always know when they opened the door who they were going to encounter. Is that true? That you yeah. sometimes used professional actors but sometimes you used people that actually went through the crisis uh, uh personally yeah i mean when garfield has to evict a, a series of people in the film i didn't tell him who would be on the other side and sometimes it would be an actor sometimes it wouldn't be an actor mm -hmm. um and often the non-actors had lost their homes i was shooting in new orleans usually they had lost their homes to katrina oh. but they could still emotionally understand what it meant sure and then i would sketch out a scene with the non-actor on my own and they would have their own trajectory they were going to go in and Garfield had a script of what a real estate broker should be saying in this moment it's not like a script for a movie it's a script that they would have mm -hmm. you knock on the door this yeah, person has a reverse mortgage script. you got to tell them to leave and these yeah. are the things you know right but when the other person starts saying my wife died that he has no idea what they're going to say and he'll have to just handle that as it happens mm -hmm which I think was exciting for uh, Andrew and I think resulted in some of his best scenes, I think, were these scenes where he didn't really know what was happening. Yeah, well, sure. Because he didn't have as much chance to get in his own head about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, he had to rest on his wits and his yeah. right his instincts. Yeah. Potentially. One guy was uh, an older gentleman. I yeah, remember that one really he... disturbed him, Andrew. It yeah. really disturbed him because I remember telling... That guy was actually an actor. Oh, he was? Yeah, and that sequence is based on a real eviction that I saw in Florida with a guy who had dementia. And um, I think this guy in the script, I gave him a reverse mortgage and his wife had died a couple of years ago and he didn't understand what it meant, reverse mortgage. And um, I told Andrew that this guy was not an actor, that he was a real person and that mm -hmm. he had dementia. So I said, I don't really know what he's going to say because he can't remember what I've told him. And that's what he thought when he knocked on the door. And I never ended up telling him that it was an actor. So when the scene was done, he, Andrew was very upset. Not, he was upset, saddened by what he had just encountered. And I just didn't see any reason to tell him that it was an actor. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that scene. And I think that, actually, I find that to be his best performance in the entire movie, mm -hmm. Garfield, is that scene. Because mm. his look is so real. Mm -hmm. He looks so troubled by what he's doing. And yeah. this one part where he's looking at him and then he stands up. So like the, the whole crew is in the background in that shot, but no one ever notices. Really? Yeah. So you're saying his best scene in 99 Homes is when he's not acting. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I enjoyed that film. Michael Shannon, uh, one of those actors everybody seems to uh, want to work with. Yeah. Right? He's like still kind of can do kind of almost anything it yeah. seems as though right yeah he's amazing yeah yeah did you did you have a uh, part in when you when the with the casting of uh, in Fahrenheit 451 did that um did you play any role in, in trying to get him for that or yeah Fahrenheit, did, you, did they think I, you could I, bring um, him to that I wrote it for him oh you did yeah yeah I asked him if he would do it and um he just said he would and so I kind of wrote that thing for oh. him which helped because I could write these kind of weird dialogues that I figured he would know how to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because that character talks a lot and he has a lot of literary references and kind of high flute and language that I thought Shannon could deliver that. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm hmm was that, that was your first adaptation from a... Yeah. <laughs> you looked a little bit... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tough one. Like that left you with a little PTSD or something. Tough one, yeah. 
just because of the the expectations of, and the well, there's I had never done it before, and there's so many things. That was a tough know, one to start with, I guess. Very. Um, I think what I didn't understand or know then, and I think no one told me was, um, if you're going to adapt a very famous book, you probably should make huge changes, and I ended up just making big changes, and I think that angered a lot of people. Um, also, what, the, what kind the, of people? Are fans of, of probably yeah, Ray, fans, Ray and, yeah. People who have a memory of the book or a memory of the Truffaut film, but probably haven't reread or reseen those things in a long time, and maybe have a false memory of those works. Um, you know, there was a lot to deal with, and um, in the novel, in terms of just updating it to deal with modern technology, was already a challenge, and then. Um, there's not a lot of scenes or locations. Not much happens in the book, and the characters are kind of thinly sketched. Uh-huh. Um, you know, his wife doesn't say or do anything. She just stares at a screen and has depression. And there's this kind of 17-year-old girl who is very naive and innocent. It's kind of hard to imagine that in 2018. I don't know if we would tolerate yes, that sir. kind of a character. Um, when was it written? It came out in fifty three. Oh yeah. And it was written over a, a few yeah. years prior to that. McCarthyism. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um he wrote it as as a short story right. first. Originally his shorts were called The Pedestrian and then oh. he kept making it into More what flushed. it became. Yeah. Was it but it was it a novella or did it actually? Yeah, novella hundred and hundred and sixty pages or so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um and and then um also you talked about um with uh, Fahrenheit I guess the idea of adapting wasn't too, too difficult in the sense of your your or or uh, disappointing or what have you, right? Because you're you're now in the midst of adapting another. I don't yeah, know, I don't already, know. You don't need to talk about it if it's too soon. But um, no, I'm working on the White Tiger. Uh, this is a nine, 2008 Man Booker Prize winner that my friend wrote. Um, oh, somebody you know. Yeah, we've been mm-hmm. friends since college, and oh. most of the book was written here and here down the street in my apartment. So I know the book very well. I've I've always wanted to do it. Um, it's a very different adaptation because it's contemporary. It's you know yeah. um, social in themes. It's social economic. It's a an underdog or a um, lower economic class character it falls in the line of the kind of stuff I've already mm-hmm. that I've done and that I enjoy doing. Um, there's a complete story. The main character is amazingly sketched out, mm-hmm. you know, um, the plot makes sense, you know, <laughs> so it doesn't have yeah. these pitfalls that kind of Fahrenheit kept her throwing at me where it's like, no matter how much I would rewrite it, it still never quite, it was hard to make it without making huge changes to it. It just became something different. This is kind of like, no, it, I have to make changes and I, you, know, you have sure. to do things, but it's still kind of there it is. The whole thing kind of, the hardest part is actually, unlike Fahrenheit where I kept having to make stuff up, here I don't have to make things up, I keep having to cut things I like. Oh, that's the, hard, that's that's the hardest. That's the challenge. That's been the hardest part so far as I can't get the page count down because I don't want to cut stuff. Oh. You know. Mm-hmm. So you need somebody, kind of somebody with, you know, to be the bad cop. <laughs> Every few days I get up and I'm like, all right, and I just cut Excise it. Excise and, it. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And then afterwards, it's not. Uh, well, quite you lose as things. Sometimes you have to cut three right pages, back. but keep three lines. You know. Uh, yeah. And is 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 this book? Is this acquaintance friend of yours? Is it, uh, who wrote it? Are they involved in? in no, it? he's not involved. He's busy just, writing an, another book. You know? I'm <laughs> reading a on. different manuscript of his at the same time. So you, yeah. So you're already sniffing at the maybe his next work, but I'm I, kidding. He's always nice enough to ask me to read mm-hmm. what I what he does, and I give my feedback. And except for the White Tiger, he's always read all my scripts and given feedback. And when I have new ideas, we I talk to him about my new ideas. He talks to me about his ideas. So we've had a 20 year phone call going because mm-hmm. um, he lives in India, Australia. He's not in America, so we just for 20 oh. years talk on the phone now. Mm-hmm. Oh, but he was. Oh, I see. He was in Brooklyn at the time. We were in college. At, oh, at, okay. Yeah, well, he came back in in oh six oh seven, but he hasn't come back here in a long time. Oh, this was in North Carolina. Is that what you're no, he oh, was here. In, we, oh. we were in college in, in Columbia. Together. Oh, Columbia, right? Yeah. Then he was here for a while, in in the early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but uh, after the first novel, he's never come back here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and now I don't recommend it. It's not the time to. No, <laughs> if you're going to do it, no. just just wait it out. Yeah. <laughs> wait it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and then uh, you're. What do you teach primarily? You're 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 teaching at Columbia. Yeah. How long have you been there? God, almost a decade. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you feel like you might have been more even more prolific? Obviously, you would have. Had, um, you weren't. Maybe I don't know. It's neither here nor there, really. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what is that? What, what do you teach? Do you how many classes do you teach? I teach just two classes a semester, so I'm just there one day a week. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, I can see. That. Yeah. yeah. No, so I don't think it really impacts my work. Right. And um, you, it's the courses you've taught before. Yeah. Yeah, directing. It's just directing courses, mm-hmm. and um, you know. I like teaching. I like being around the students. Um, you always learn something from them. You get a sense of what they're watching, what they're thinking. Are they watching? They're they're watching TV. Yeah, a lot. A lot of TV. Yeah, the night of Big Little Lies. They're mm, in those the night. Were both good ones. Say it again. Those were both good ones. I like the Riz Ahmed yeah. night of. The other one I, I didn't see that one, but um, you saw the night of. Is what you're saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I like Riz Ahmed and. Um, yeah, I just was I, uh, arbitrarily. I mean, I think the last thing a uh, movie I saw on HBO was probably uh, Fahrenheit 451. Now that I didn't think about, and then since then, I just watched this first episode of this uh, new uh, one that oh. was by the director of Big Little Lies, mm-hmm. just to kind of check it out. I don't know. And you enjoyed it? No. Jury's out a little bit still. It wasn't. It, it was. It was fine. It so was just. Opera. It's it is it's it's there is that it's melodrama high yeah. high high end yeah yeah I don't know I have never seen it um, the Big Little Lies you mean and then, I've never seen yeah it, this no. one which uh, I think that with the wire is exceptionally cutting good. the wire, the wire. That well was the, very good yeah well, yeah I mean that was groundbreaking right and that was uh, very good. I've had actually on speaking of the wire I've actually had on you know like I. I've had on four different people from The Wire, yeah. four different actors, just strangely, you know, it's just like, so I put up all the segments up on my YouTube, the YouTube channel as like a playlist here, just you can listen to these four people, not talk about The Wire, but they're all from The Wire, you know, or had been on The Wire at some point for some period of time. Yeah. No, they, I mean, there's undeniably some great TV, um, you know, and it, you can find it uh, on, you know, all sorts of platforms. Is that something that's likely to? Uh, I mean, even David Gordon Green with Red Oaks. I th- yeah. I, did you Did you get to see any of that show? The Red Oaks. It's I, a comedy. I saw, yeah, I saw. But it's pilot. really good. Yeah, I, I, saw the, I saw the pilot, and I saw that in Vice Principals. I always see the first oh, right, episodes sure. to see what David's up to. Yeah, yeah. but that, that's pretty. I, I used to found it down was pretty terrific too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but does that hold any kind of? Uh, I yeah, know, why, why not? Appeal, you know, why not? If it's the right thing, yeah, like, you know, does that idea? I mean, it's a whole other kind of right. People talk about the structure of it being different, where you're you're writing a longer kind of arc as opposed to. Well, I'm to do a pilot this fall. Are um, you? It's not mine. I'm just the director. It's For hire? A, yeah, it's a, a Tim Kring's. He did Heroes, mm-hmm. and a, a hand like four or five other series. Okay. So, um, well, you've done that before, right? No, I've never. Oh, I'm sorry. I've made. Um, one commercial that Adam Stone shot. That oh. was the first thing I did where it was like, I'm executing somebody else's vision. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm here to build a table as best I can, the way right. you want that table to look. And uh-huh. Maybe I'll make some suggestions. If you like them, you'll take them. So I have something like that for the fall that, you know, it's Tim's show and um, his vision, and I'll just try to help. And Who is it? Tim Krings, the, oh, the showrunner. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, right, for yeah. like heroes and others. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a based on the Born Identity franchise, and um, so it, he's a great guy. He's talented. It's an interesting mm-hmm. show, and I'll do my best to accommodate and to yeah, you know, you help help it. Uh, yeah, you you're, you try to give as many ideas as you can that you think will help their vision. So it's uh, it's weird. Yeah, it's yeah. like I'm in the position of I see myself in my role almost like the. DP or production designer is for me where they're trying to make what I want to do better or more or Mm -hmm. add to it. I'm trying to just do that for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what you want to make. How could I help you, you know, make it better, more the way you see it or see it a little differently? Mm -hmm. But it'll be different because I've never, I've not had that experience on a long term. I've only done it on a commercial. Right. So I have that in White Tiger and um, 
a, a, a New York. I have a project in New York I'm, I've been developing again. I started it in '09, and about four or five months ago, we picked it up again. And with my uh, Jason and his company, uh, Gigantic Pictures, oh. we did Goodbye Solo and Plastic Bag together. And in '09, we started a project. So but maybe four or five months ago, I said, hey, guys, let's get back to that. And so we now researching, and um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I hopefully I'll make that after White Tiger here in New York. Oh, the, okay, that's interesting. There's, that's a film? Yeah, it's a feature film, with, okay. uh, probably with no actors again. And, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, well, that's good to hear. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, there is always this, it, right? Do you, you get those folks that are very, um, that, that kind of wall you in a little bit too, right? Like, because this is their ideal uh, Ramin Brani oh, yeah. phase, right? So yeah. you get that a yeah. lot. Is it, does that bother you, or I mean, or have you um, struggle with? Have you struggled with that? You know, because people, you know, I mean, an artist is always evolving and growing and changing and shifting, right? It's, yeah, I mean, it, to some degree, it is frustrating when people think you have to do something or you are a certain way. Um, without any price, I remember when I sent the script to Hollywood, people asked if I spoke English. Um, that's just ignorance, though, right? I don't know. Now it's a, a trend to be, now it's a trend to be interested in diversity. I got a phone call about a job when diversity became a cool thing, and they really wanted me to say that I was Muslim on the call, which I didn't want to answer that question. Um, things come and go, I guess. Fashion. Um, it's the way you're phrasing all that sounds like there's some some level of resentment or aggravation around it. I'm not, I mean, that's maybe an understatement. I don't know. Because you're calling it like it's it's trendy now, right? I mean, I hope what seems to be working and lasting is that um, female artists are moving forward. Mm-hmm. And also, I think black American artists are moving forward. These are two big movements that are, I think, exceptionally good and way overdue. And I hope it's not... Hollywood lip service. I hope it's for real, but and I think it is. I think it will be to some degree. I think they're the the leaders of those movements, uh, women, black, are really putting their claws in there and they're pulling people up, which is great. I think for brown and yellow people and and red and everyone else, this doesn't make any difference. I think to Hollywood, despite the brown and yellow is like. Four billion people. I don't think Hollywood has much of an interest in it. Mm-hmm. And Native Americans, I think, no one even knows they or even a, exist as a, a race of human beings that were here long before any of us. Um, mm-hmm. I get. I, I should be off social media, and if I didn't do this podcast, I probably would be off social media. But I felt like, you know, people were sharing something about Im- immigration, which, of course, you know, is, is, is in every, you know, on everybody's mind. But um, and I just remember something that Ann Coulter, you know, it's not a typical example, but you know, she wrote my family, my, my ancestors were not immigrants because everybody's a project of, of immigrants coming here. Right. She goes, they were settlers. And I was just thinking, see, you're, you'd rather associate your family with those people that came here and decimated, you know, the the culture and the all the indigenous people, that that you're okay owning, but not that your parents came. Like the immigrants have this, you know, the associations of of, of escaping potentially, you know, hardships and coming here for opportunity and freedom. Yeah. So, but she she preferred to have the other version, um, you know. Anyway, it's the just, politics comes and goes, but yeah, um, yeah. I think filmmaker just keeps making their movie. And um, mm. it just hangs around, you know. When I when I look at the people I admire, Herzog or you mm-hmm. know Varda or Mike Lee, um, Kiarostemi. I mean, I mention them because they're older. So much politics changed around them over the decades, but their films just keep going forward, you know, like a stream. Um, so. I would try to keep just mm-hmm. making the ones I want to make and keep my shirt black and not yellow. I think this is a good place to pause, you know? It might be a good place to pause, and maybe what what we can do is uh, when um, White Tiger, 
when that uh, when that's uh, coming out, we I'll I'll, I'll I'll go back to working with the publicist because oh, okay. <laughs> I probably want to. we're done. I think it's a good place to kind okay. of you know. What do you think? Sure. Did we leave anything out that was? Uh... I'm waiting for the tough questions. Well, I tried to kind of get it going a little bit. I mean, you did divulge some stuff about you know when there's somebody asks you uh, if you you know speak English. Or expect you to uh, admit to being a Muslim, you know, or talk about that on a phone call to drum up business or, right, to create some sort of interest in a project. There's nothing I can say about that that isn't already obvious, you know. Mm -hmm. Better is if we talk about the films, you know. Yeah. Because that's not my business to talk about it. Um won't get anywhere better is to just make another film i think mm-hmm. you know? yeah yeah well i think and and rewatching as i did the other week last week i was rewatching because it had been a significant amount of time since i saw either chop shop or uh man push cart and then i realized i should probably watch goodbye solo too but solo. I, huh yeah i like that one yeah, well, I do too. I did see that in the. Pretty sure I saw that when it came out. Oh you, yeah, you know. I was at the Angelica too, and the Lincoln Plaza. Uh huh. Well, yeah. Whoever yeah. programs or whoever, I don't know who does that part of the salesperson who gets it into the who deals with the getting ma- yeah the distributor. Getting it. So yeah, right. It's of course it's the distributor. So so the uh, what was I think? So they they always seem to get the films into both the Lincoln Plaza and the Angelica. Angelica yeah. Well, you can no in longer. In fact, the Lincoln can't Dan do it. Albert at the, said no first. Then the New York Times review came, and he called and said, okay, bring it, bring it. And he got it one week later. Oh, really? Okay. Well, neither the Lincoln Plaza, sadly, or Dan Talbot. Talbot is... They're around anymore. They're neither around anymore. Yeah. To the ever-changing time. Yeah. I understand the... Uh, weirdly, though, I, I didn't really even know this until a few weeks ago. I think Annette in, Insdorf told me. I was at the... Do you know the Magno press... You know, where they have press screenings? Yeah. Which is now also... That's by also way of, closed, yeah closed last yeah. week i was at the like second to last night i went to a screening paul da- uh, dano oh, oh his new film did you see it no i can't wait to see it paul yeah. told me about it years ago oh really and i was you know it's... i remember saying it just make it contemporary so you can make it thank god he held out i haven't seen it i can't wait to see it I, we bumped yeah. into each other in can yeah and i'm very eager to see it i heard it's very good yeah Wildfire, right yes it was, it was very good, good. it was he's really a, good. he's a cinephile He's Clearly, real, this guy like is obsessed with with great watching great movies. So I'm very curious what he's made, and I've heard it's very good. Yeah. Well, again, there's a case where I requested. I saw it, you know, at the second to last night that the screening room existed. I wanted to go back. I ran in Annette in store. She was sitting behind me. I said, "Isn't this sad that we're no we're not going to?" She didn't know. Uh, I had just read about it on IndieWire. I was I didn't know either that it was that it was closing in a couple of days. Anyway, so. But yeah, there was a guy that I would love to bring. That's why I made that request. But who knows? I mean, the publicist knows I want to bring Paul, but I don't know if they'll, it'll happen because yeah. you know they get X number of hours, and I'm not always at the. You know, I might be going up against, you know, NPR and New York Times, yeah. and who knows what else. So, but I think it would be a great, great opportunity and a great conversation if it should work out. But yeah, it was really good film. It was a very good film. Um, and why, why, why did we start? Why did we get off on on, on WAP? Oh, because of the Linga Plaza closing, everything closing. They moved up. Uh, she and that told me they moved. They were starting to move the um, some of the. They were doing theatricals now at the JCC. I didn't know that, that. from. They were calling it like Lincoln, like kind of packaging it or marketing it as Lincoln Plaza, because it's relatively close to where the Lincoln Plaza was, just blocks away. Right, actually, very close. It's only blocks from there, so they were trying to get the crowds from the Lincoln Plaza to come up, those old folks, to go to the JCC, and they have a nice cinema mm. in there, I guess. Mm. Anyway, so they were doing that. So, Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I hope it was a good enough interview, and, and you know, if you feel like, happy. I'm, <laughs> oh, no. Well, uh, you know, I'm also, I think it's, you know, you try to keep it, uh, we could have got far more into the bit. I try to kind of get it at that right balance, you know. We're looking forward to the White Tiger. Do you have an idea, by the way, when that might even happen? It could even, I suppose, happen after this other project that you went to those guys at... Uh, oh, my New York one? The New York, right? Maybe, yeah. You never know, right? Yeah. What takes and what... Yeah, you never know. 
what gets traction. Yeah. Right? That's the worst part. That the gigantic know. films? Is that what you said? Those guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I remembered. They're nice guys. Good. And yeah. women. Pamela. I don't know. I don't know their names, so. Jason and Pamela. They're good. What's Jason's last name? Jason Orans. Orans? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they should do something with, uh, you know, on, you know, it's, it, if they're choosing enough interesting projects. Now, do you go, and by the way, do you see, are you taking advantage of this time? Or you're not teaching right now, right? Because no. it's summer. Yeah. Although I guess there are summer classes, but not for you. Uh, are you, do you go, do you go out to the theaters and see many films? Yeah, I just saw a film yesterday. Yes. Um, oh, did you? Yeah. And I'm supposed to see something tonight. I don't know if I'll make it or not. I was thinking about going to see Bella Tarr at the Metrograph tonight. Oh, wow. Brookmeister. That is a, an intense evening, right? Yeah, I haven't seen it in, I think, 15 years. And I think I saw it, I think I've only seen it on a DVD, which is, not. I can only imagine right. it's totally not the same. No. Um, for that kind of a film, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see things yeah. you, you wouldn't yeah, see yeah, otherwise. Sure, I sure. mean, even if you're, you know. Um, and what did you just see? Like, maybe you don't want to talk about it. I was oh, first performed. Oh, f- well, Paul's film. Yeah, yeah. I think, you- yeah. Uh, what'd you think? Yeah. Yeah, you enjoyed it? Are you a fan of Ethan Hawke's? Or- oh, I think he's very good in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am a fan of his. Mm-hmm. He's good. Yeah. He's good on stage, too. Yeah. He's an actor. Right. Yeah, I think he's very good. He's getting better and better each. I think it's- you can see in Boyhood, he gets so, he's, performance is just, he, he like really finds himself as an actor by the second half of that experience boyhood as he's getting older yeah i, I appreciate it has his he's the one of he's these doing eternally boyish work. guys and i don't know that that's intentional i don't think so i think some people just are that way some actors you know and when it finally starts to fade he's doing his best work i think yeah. his best work still even ahead of him oh sure i think he's very good yeah uh well, and if he gets the uh, well, ramin barani project i would like to work with him why I'm not sure you should we talked one time to try to do something we just haven't had the mm-hmm. opportunity but i think he's I really think he still has his best work in front of him. Mm-hmm. And his relationship, his films with, you know, Linkletter, I think are very special. They're very real. He seems to really f- just fall in there and half fiction, half documentary. I don't know what they're doing, but it's good mm-hmm. what they do together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they have a shorthand, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Linkletter is good. He managed to, he survived. It's good. Yes. Yeah, I like him. He's like a like a big hero in Austin. Yeah, you know. he's good as a person. And he's good as a filmmaker. Both. I was, again another guy I've been trying to get on here, but it worked with you, so it gives yeah. me hope. I finally brought on one of my favorite you have filmmakers. So many great people here, Colin. Yeah, I know, but it's never. It's like you know, you you're focus hungry. more on. You're hungry. You want you're hungry. More. The guys that also when I was coming up, it sounds like not too different of time frame than you. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Around, I mean, I certainly started discovering cinema on my own, uh, aside from what my parents brought to me, you know, and they did do an incredible job because they put on all those great auteurs on my radar, you know. Um, so I really had the groundwork done. But when I started discovering it on my own, my own generation of, of filmmakers, those are the guys like, you know, uh, a generation may be older than you, but they're still very much you know, making relevant works like Jim Jarmusch and. It's amazing. That All those great it. guys, yeah. you know, and they're, they're, um, I, those are the guys I want to, and, and, you know, to some degree, Richard Linklater. I mean, I discovered him a little later, but I would love to bring him on. Yeah, he's and, great. You know? Yeah. Tom and, is just great. Yeah. I'm getting his partner on, though. Oh, I heard she made a film. Yeah, Basquiat. Oh, I haven't seen it. It's called Boom, it's for, out. Boom for Real. Yeah, it came out already. It was at the New York Film Festival, then mm-hmm. it came out about four or five months ago, three or four months ago, earlier this like late spring but she's still traveling around with it and now she's uh, she's working on his helping with his new project so hmm. he has a new one i guess yeah yeah, yeah. It sounds like he's got something new. he's in a bit of another you know spurt of uh or period of of Making productivity good. which is great right yeah the so more from him the better i know it's like you know if they don't get completely discouraged because of the financing issue after making films for 30, 40 years, you know, you can understand why they would. Yeah. That that could happen. Yeah. You know? Anyway, um, but, um, all right, so we'll do this again, I hope, okay. for part two. Thank you very Thank much. You. For, it was great meeting you. Too. Thank you. Okay.